CB67, codenamed Baseplate. Beep, 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 be slam. That was the sound of Naruto smashing his alarm clock to pieces as he slowly opened his eyes to see the wonderful view of both of his wives sleeping on either side of him. Yugito was on his left side and Fu was on his right both with smiles on their faces as they snuggled into him. He chuckled slightly before deciding it best to wake them by bending his head down he planted kisses on both of their foreheads, causing them to stir in their sleep. Eventually the pair started to awake and both yawned in synchronization, to which he found to be cute when both wiped the sleep out of their eyes before they concentrated on him. Smiling back at him the two women kissed him on lips as their form of mourning. Well that sure is one way to wake up to a beautiful sight, especially after what we did last night, Naruto smirked as they broke the kiss and winked at his wives, who blushed deeply when they remembered last night's activities. Yugito then lightly slapped him for the comment. Naruto-kun stopped being a pervert, Yugito playfully reprimanded that only caused all three to laugh lightly. It was then that they caught sight of the clock on the opposite wall and noticed that it was 8am, meaning that they had an hour to get ready before having to meet the captains at the Hueys for their departure to Konoha, a place that Naruto was in no hurry to arrive at all. I think it's time we get up, after all it wouldn't do good to come late and disappoint everyone, Naruto said as all three began to change into their uniform and eat breakfast. After they ate breakfast they made their way to the launch deck of the aircraft carrier. On the way they received numerous salutes to which they returned and proceeded to climb the corridors until they finally reached the launch deck. On the deck, three Hueys were stationed in a line and in the cockpit were both pilots that were doing final checks on the machines to make sure they were working properly. In front of them stood the captains and 15 soldiers. The 15 soldiers were standing at attention and in three ranks of five. The captains stood a few feet in front and facing them. When they saw Naruto, Yugito and Fu arriving Akio began the drill. Commanding officer on deck. Salute, she finished yelling as each member of the group saluted their generals. Said generals marched in sync until they stood in the center between the captains and the privates. At ease men, Naruto ordered as the soldiers withdrew their hands from their foreheads and placed their hands behind their backs whilst widening the space between the legs in a more relaxed stance. Once they were done Naruto thought it best that he give the advice he had given his captains the previous day as they would be being inserted into a potential hostile country. They needed to be aware of the tension that was sure to come about whilst in Konoha. Now first of all I want the first rank and the first two people on the left in the following rank to take one step forward. The first rank, containing five soldiers, and the other two soldiers took one step forward completely simultaneously. U7 will be bodyguards for Captains, Fujita, Hokkaido, Yamagata, Kyoto, Okayama, Kumamoto and Okinawa. You will defend them until told otherwise by either a captain or general. We will be traveling to Kanahagakur and our ETA is 1200 hours. The east is a very hostile area and you will treat everyone there with caution. When we arrive you will activate your hidden cameras. This will serve mainly as evidence in case you are attacked. In the event that you are attacked you are allowed to use lethal force. They may also come at you in a mob, if so use your flares to signal us and stand your ground until reinforcements arrive. When we arrive we will head to Konoha's Chunin Exam Stadium where I will face the Konoha 11 in one-on-one -on -one matches. You will be guarding the captains in their designated seating area and will prohibit anyone from entering unless given permission by either the captains or generals. After that we will stay at a hotel where tomorrow the negotiations will continue. Then we will rendezvous with the Hueys, codenamed Hawk and extract back to HQ. In the meantime everyone else is to secure the rendezvous point and make sure no one unfavorable tries to sabotage us or gain information on our armed forces. Understood, Naruto finished as he waited for their replies. Sir, yes sir, they chorused all together. Right face, Sato stated as the soldiers all turned 90 degrees clockwise so that they were now facing the Hueys. Mount up, Sato continued as each rank marched in sync towards each helicopter and proceeded to board them and check their weapons and other equipment to make sure they were in good conditions. When they were all seated Naruto, Yugito, Fu and the captains also boarded the Hueys as the rotating blades started to pick up speed and dust. Upon taking his seat Naruto pressed his right index and middle finger to his ear in order to activate his codec. It was a very advanced form of communications that allowed all of his subordinates to contact him and, if necessary, allow the views of their hidden cameras to appear on his interface, the best part of it was that it practically invisible unless you were up close to him. Okay we'll be moving in a reverse triangular formation, Hawks 1 and 3 will be at the front whilst Hawk 2 will be at the back and keep an eye out for anyone suspicious. This applies specifically to those who wear the attire of the Akatsuki or wear an OTO hit A8. Confirm orders. 
sir, yes sir, was the resounding response as the Hueys took off and headed towards Kanahagakur with the cheers of the soldiers still on the ship following them across the water. As the helicopter swept past villages, rivers and forestry Naruto couldn't help but reminisce the experience that he once had with the continent and despite the fact that he didn't like the hidden villages, he couldn't help but enjoy the feeling of nostalgia as the fresh air whisked past him and he closed his eyes for a moment before sighing in relaxation. Upon opening them again he looked at the serious expressions on each of his soldiers' faces and had a small flashback on how he got them to be disciplined. Flashback. The hidden villages system is crap. They are too lenient towards them and allow dangerous personalities to come to fruit, especially since they allow them to become legal adults as soon as they pass their Jonin Sensei test, Naruto thought as he stared at his clock and tapped his left index finger on the desk in a smooth rhythm. He noticed these flaws when he thought back on his experiences. Sakura and Ino were allowed to continue their fangirl tendencies. Sasuke was still able to be an Avenger. Joji could stuff himself. Shikamaru could still be lazy. Kiba could still be hot-headed. Hinata was still shy. Shino was allowed to invade the privacy of his comrades with his insects. Lee could still be too loud. Tenten was still allowed to only specialize in weapons and not advised to widen her range of jutsu, despite her ability to perform nin, tai and genjutsu. Then finally Neji was still able to rely on his Jukin as a Hyuga and was not told to also widen his range of Jutsu, especially since his Byakugan and High Chakra control, which was required for Jukin to be utilized, could be used for medical Jutsu to prevent the loss of life when on missions. Each of them had major flaws that could be taken advantage of. No, what Naruto needed was a system that allowed the soldiers relax and be serious when on missions as well as make them become well-rounded soldiers that could adapt to any situation. Dot dot dot. Kami he knew how many times problems had come about on missions because his comrades would allow their faults to rule their decisions or their weaknesses were exposed and ultimately brought more danger than needed to the mission. Example being Neji's strength was only in Jukin whilst his other skills were academy level or Sasuke and his revenge-driven ego. An idea then came to him as he stopped tapping the table with his finger. That's it. Naruto inwardly shouted, causing him to wake up Kurama from inside his head. What is Kit? He questioned as he took a yawn and stretched out to click his joints in place. I just came up with a system to allow my men relaxation but remain serious on missions and allow them to be adaptive, Naruto replied as the Kit soon raised an eyebrow waiting for the answer. How can you do that Kit? All those ninja in Konoha and the other hidden villages only know discipline when their cages or leaders yell at them. Tours. In peace each soldier will have six months relaxation where they are not required to do any missions and can use the time for themselves whilst also being required to train to meet the standards we give. Then they must spend six months on duty and are expected to be serious about it and not allow their personal lives to get in the way. In war the time spent on duty will be increased due to the constant fighting and the relaxation period will have to decrease. We will also teach them not to complain as they would have been trained to accept the risk of discomfort and that they had the choice to not join but did. Lastly we'll also give tests later on to make sure that they are still fit for service and anyone who isn't is either retrained or discharged if they reach over the limit of times they're allowed to fail. Karama thought about the idea and admitted that it had quite a lot of merit to it. It would especially help the UWN avoid the problem of insubordination and as a result the UWN could avoid the consequences caused by them, such as a war because a soldier killed a high-standing official from a foreign country because they insulted them. Dot dot dot. He was even more convinced of this when he remembered that some of the shinobi wars were started because of less provocative activities. Okay Kit, it sounds like a good idea specifically since it would mean less trouble for you as you do run a nation that rivals all the elemental nations put together, Kurama stated as he went back to sleep. Naruto sweet dropped at his tenant's ability to just sleep, he had to be lazier than the Naris. Meanwhile in Konoha, a certain pineapple-haired Chunin sneezed, breaking his concentration from the shogi game he was playing and sending the pieces flying over at his ex-sensei. Troublesome, someone must be talking about me. Damn, I was so close to winning that round, sigh. Guess the score is still 100 to 30 and to Shikamaru no less. I knew he was a genius but this takes the rice cake, thought a certain smoking Sarutobi. Anyway Naruto grabbed his ballpoint pen and started writing down the orders for the new system he wanted implemented for his army. End flashback. It was then that he noticed a wooden crate that was on the helicopter. On top it had the words, standard military outfit, in big bold impact font and below it in a smaller font was the list of what it contained. 1x standard combat uniform. And, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, Ranger Outfit, Forest Version. 1x first aid kit. 2x flashbangs. 2x smoke grenades. 
3 XM67 Fragmentation Grenades, 1 X Beretta M9, 5 by 9 mm ammunition magazines 15 rounds per magazine, 1 X Stun Knife, 1 X Gas Mask, 1 X Thermal, Night Vision Goggles, 4 X Ration Bars, 1 X Water Canteen, plus other necessities. The crate itself was missing the standard Colt M16A2, but Naruto had denied it as he believed that the rifle was only really necessary when facing numerous opponents at once and not in one-on-one -on -one fights. Looking towards his wives he saw that they were staring out over the continent as well. Probably thinking back to their time here as well, he thought before closing his eyes to rest before he would have to face his former comrades. He thoughts were spot on as his wives were thinking back on their time in the elemental nations. Yugito was remembering the only good times she spent with Team Samui that included, Karui, Omui and Samui as their leader. Who was thinking back on her only friend Shibuki, the leader of Takagakur and also a friend of Naruto when he was still a part of Team 7 and was tasked to escort him back to Taki to rule it. In fact due to unforeseen problems he ended up saving Taki, although his sensei only seemed to praise the other two. Looking back to their husband and then glancing at each other they both came to the same conclusion. We're not going to let anyone hurt Naruto-kun or either of us because of their bitterness. That we swear on. Meanwhile in Konoha, the cages, Mifune, the Konoha 11, their sensei, Anko and Uruka were all standing atop the Hokage monument that now had Tsunade's face added to it. Tsunade herself was pacing back and forth biting her thumbnail every so often with a look of worry on her face. Though nobody who knew of her connection to the blonde Jinchuriki would blame her as she did view him as a surrogate little brother. The Konoha 11 had mixed feelings. Some people were curious as to what their friend now looked like and how he became a leader to a continent that had basically the same problems as the them, these were Shikamaru, Shino, Lee and Shoji. Then there were people who were nervous about meeting the man who they had beaten 10 years ago, these were Ino, Hinata, Kiba, Tenten and Neji. Finally there were those who wanted nothing more than to beat the man to a pulp and steal all that he had made to fulfill their own desires, namely Sasuke and Sakura. The Konoha 11 senseis, along with Aruka and Anko, were wondering what the blonde looked like after 10 years, aside from Guy and Kakashi who already knew but refused to divulge any information on him. Many though shivered when they heard Anko whisper to herself all the possibilities that he could look like as well as how he had grown. Dot dot dot. In more ways than just height wise. The cages and Mifune were just thinking of ways of how Naruto could beat any of the Konoha and so far they couldn't come up with anything. The only thing they thought he could fight with was hand-to-hand -hand combat and weapons and even then they were sure it wouldn't compare to the Konoha 11 since they can use chakra and he can't. It was 12 p.m. when the cages, Mifune, Guy and Kakashi heard the familiar chopping sound of the Hueys they glanced at the others who were looking around wondering what the noise was. What is that sound, was the question that was generally being mentally asked amongst those who had not encountered the helicopters. Looking out over Konoha they saw the Hueys approaching them at high speeds that they themselves would be hard pressed to match. Those who hadn't seen them before wondered how on earth a nation that had no access to chakra could make something that could achieve flight. A feat that only a few in IWA could do. They were not the only ones staring up at them in confusion and awe as many of the Konoha villagers and ninja were thinking the same thing. What the hell, they heard Kiba shout as everyone was forced to hunch over slightly as the Hueys started to land in the clearing behind the Hokage monument. As soon as the rotating blades stopped moving the shinobi and samurai were able to stand at their full height again and gazed at the men and women standing before them. Naruto, his wives and his captain stepped out of their transports first and formed two ranks, Naruto and his wives in the front and his captains behind them. The other soldiers were still on the helicopters unloading the luggage everyone had brought with them. Naruto and his company gave a small bow in respect before he decided to greet the leaders. Good evening Hokage Dono, Keisukeage Dono, Mizukage Dono, Suchikage Dono, Reikage Dono and Mifune Dono, he then glanced impassively to the others in the audience who all shifted slightly, except two who glared at him. Inwardly rolling his eyes at his ex-teammate's childish behavior Naruto continued his introduction. Along with me are my commanding officers of the United Whirlpool Military. May I introduce Generals Yugito Niuzumaki and Fu Uzumaki. After them are my captains. Captain Akio Fujita, commander of the 1st Infantry Squad. Captain Sato Hakado, commander of the 2nd Infantry Squad. Captain Takahashi Yamagata, commander of the 3rd Infantry Squad. Captain Inoue Kyoto, commander of the 1st Medic Squad. Captain Yamamoto Okayama, commander of the 1st Airborne Squad. Captain Sakamoto Kumamoto, commander of the 1st Armor Squad. Then finally Captain Kinjo Okinawa, commander of the 1st Supply Squad. 
Once Naruto had finished Yukito, Fu and the captains all gave a salute which confused the leaders but responded with a slight bow to show their respect. Welcome Uzukaj Dono. I believe that we should all depart to the stadium where you can change and then we can commence the tournament, Mifune stated monotonously as the cages and Naruto nodded in response. Turning back to the Hueys Naruto called out, you know your orders. At that moment each soldier immediately leapt into action where five of the seven bodyguards marched to each of their assigned captains, whilst the other two picked up the crate and brought it off of the helicopter. The remaining soldiers went about setting up the area so that they could sleep there whilst also being easily able to respond to any attack. The position Naruto and his group formed where Naruto and his wives were at the front, the captains were behind them, along with the two carrying the crate, and the other bodyguards formed a protection circle around. While walking through the village the group got many confused looks from the populace due to their odd appearance, which changed to glares when they recognized their leader. The cages and their group were sweating slightly when they saw the looks being given and hoped that none of them would try anything stupid. Hey isn't that the Kyuubi brat? Monster should have died. They should be arrested and executed just for existing. No doubt those other people are being controlled by some genjutsu. As the insults continued being whispered the ninja of the group who cared about Naruto and his company started to sweat even more. Some even took a moment to observe their reactions. To their surprise none of their guests were showing any physical reaction to the negative treatment. They could tell through their eyes that they were annoyed but other than that nothing. Most of their own would have showed some kind discomfort but these UWN soldiers were acting as if nothing was going on, though they did tense when the looks changed from curiosity to hostile. Soon they arrived at the stadium that was currently empty but would be full of people once the matches began. All right now that we have arrived we can begin. Uzukaj Dono you and your men carrying the equipment may go to the changing room to change and then go the arena where you will face the Konoha 11. Your generals, captains and their bodyguards may sit with us in the cage box. From there on we will begin the matches, Tsunade said as Naruto nodded and motioned for the privates holding the crate to follow him. Time skipped two hours later. The stands were packed with both civilians and shinobi, with the cages and Naruto group being on the cage box that had been expanded to better accommodate the extra weight. Seeing that everyone was in position Tsunade stood up and began the announcement. Welcome everybody, today the Shinobi Alliance has arranged for a tournament between Kanahagakur's Konoha 11 and the United Whirlpool Nations Uzukage, Naruto Uzumaki. At the mention of the Konoha 11 many cheered, but they changed to boos and many other negative insults when they heard who the Uzukage was. Demon. We should have kill. Silence, Tsunade shouted, quietening the crowds with a burst of key. Once they were settled down Tsunade went back to announcing the part of the bet. Now this was decided because the effectiveness of the Uzukage's military was brought into question. In response a challenge was presented, the Uzukage will face the Konoha 11 in one-on-one -on -one battles. Should he lose to any of them his nation will be under the immediate control of the Shinobi Alliance, but if he defeats them all then Uzushiogakur will become a part of the United Whirlpool Nation. Now let's proceed to the first match, Tsunade finished as she received cheers from the people in the stands. When she sat back down she turned towards Kakashi and the other Jonin sensei who were stationed as the guards for the cages during the event. So Kakashi what was the layout of the matches that your students decided on? Looking over to his superior the copy nin gave her his patented, I smile, which really annoyed people since so far nobody had seen his face other than his late father, late mother and the late medic nin that saw him at birth. Well Hokage-sama, apparently the Konoha 11 still think that Uzukage-sama still has a crush on Sakura and that that should be enough to win. After her it is Ino, Hinata, Tenten, Shikamaru, Shino, Choji, Kiba, Lee, Neji and then Sasuke. Tsunade raised an eyebrow at the statement about Sakura. First match, Naruto Uzumaki vs Sakura Haruno. Begin. But isn't Naruto Ureya? Winner, Naruto Uzumaki. What? Minutes earlier. Naruto walked out of the dark hallway into the arena where he was met with the familiar scene of the forest clearing that he had been competing in to become a chunin over a decade ago. It looked cleaned and although many of the trees and plants had been replaced and moved around it didn't stop the small flashback he had that showed his match with Neji. He was no longer wearing his armor but instead wore the standard combat uniform for his soldiers. On his right hip was the holster for his M9 and on his lower back was his stun knife placed horizontally. Also he had his other various pieces of equipment on his person with easy access to them. Walking into the arena full of confidence that wasn't backed up by mere arrogance, but instead confidence that was supported by skills. When he heard the comments made about him when he was announced he mentally shook his head at the stupidity that had come about. 
It made him think how blind or idiotic the previous Hokages could have been if they believed Konoha to care for all of its inhabitants like family when they have shown time and time again that they don't care about anybody if it was only slightly not human. To add insult to the injury the civilians are trying to control the shinobi as if they were their servants and if they were challenged they would say the demon is controlling them. Then again he hasn't seen firsthand what the village was like before the Kayubi attack so he couldn't judge them on that though he was not allowing them to use that as an excuse for what they had done. They had been told to treat him like a hero by their prized Yandaimi and they spat on it, whatever happens to them is because of their own doing not the Hokages. Upon seeing who the proctor would be for the tournament he turned a bright red at seeing Anko Mitarashi, standing in the center of the clearing in the same, outfit she had worn during the Chunin exams. It was always baffled him on how she could wear something like that and not in the least feel insecure about it. When said woman turned and saw Naruto standing there she gave him a big grin that seemed to stretch across her face. Hey there stud, so you ready for your first match? Yeah I'm ready, let's get this show started then. Naruto nodded, giving a smile back to the snake using Kunoichi. Right, by the way when this is over do you want to get some dinner together after this, she asked in surprisingly nervous tone. Raising an eyebrow Naruto thought back on his interactions with the woman. She wasn't mean to me like everyone else and in fact she is treated to a lesser extent like me because of her past affiliation with Orochimaru so maybe, he thought before replying. Sure but anything further and we will need to talk to Fu-chan and Yugito-chan about it. I don't want to start dating anyone that would upset my two wives so it will be their decision overall. Sighing Anko nodded in response. She knew it would be difficult but it didn't stop her, in fact she saw it as a kind of challenge. To be honest with herself she had had a slight crush on the blonde when she was assigned to be his hidden guard when his birthday came about. He wasn't beaten constantly, just on his birthdays that coincided with the Kayubi's attack. Other than that though he was ripped off when shopping, if he was even allowed to shop there in the first place, he was insulted by just about everyone in the village and was sabotaged in the academy by the teachers, except for Aruka. In fact Naruto in a way had suffered worse than Gara did, despite saying otherwise during the Chunin exams. This was because even though everyone knew about Gara's status he was never actually beaten because of Shukaku, he certainly wasn't ripped off by store owners and he knew who his parents were despite thinking that they hated him. The only thing that he had over Naruto in that department was that he was robbed of sleep which was fixed recently when the Aikibi was ripped out of him and Lady Chio sacrificed herself to bring him back to life. Back to the subject at hand, before any of them could continue they heard footsteps from the other side of the clearing. Naruto Baka quit harassing the proctor, Sakura said as she scowled and stomped towards the center. Naruto's response was to just put on a blank expression. Once they were all ready for the fight Anko went over the rules. Now the rules of these fights will be as follows, everything goes. The match will only end when one gives up, is unconscious, is dead or I step in. Naruto Uzumaki cannot use any chakra-based jutsu. Lastly there must be no outside interferences. Failure to comply with these rules will result in automatic disqualification. Understood. Receiving two nods in acceptance Anko raised her right hand above her head. First match, Naruto Uzumaki vs Sakura Haruno. Begin, Anko brought her hand down and jumped out of way to avoid the charging banshee that was Sakura Haruno. Cha, I'm going to beat your face and for surpassing Sasuke-kun, she shrieked as she charged in with a sloppy left hook, intent on crushing his skull with a fraction of Tsunade's strength. Naruto remained stock still with that blank look on as Sakura closed the distance between the two. Dot 10 meters. 5 meters. Dot 2 meters. Cha, Sakura shouted as she swung her fist at the blonde. Naruto sidestepped to the right and delivered a hard elbow blow to the back of her neck causing her to be temporarily stunned and hunch over as she lost her balance. Naruto then raised his right knee and struck right in the solar plexus causing her gasp as her breath was robbed from her, as well as causing her to throw up her lunch. The pain was too much for the dieting, physically weak medic Nin and passed out falling none too gracefully into a puddle of her vomit that smelled awful. Seeing that the pinket was out for the count Anko shouted, Winner, Naruto Uzumaki. In the cage box. Seems like they were wrong, Anaki snorted as the other cages nodded in agreement as Sakura was taken off the field by stretcher bearers. Meanwhile the captains of the United Whirlpool military were snickering at the match. They hadn't seen anything so pathetic in their lives. Even fresh soldiers fought better than that when they started training. Back in the arena, Naruto and Anko were sorting out the finer details of their date when they saw Ino approaching. When both of them were ready Ino wanted to apologize for her and the other's treatment of him before his exile. Naruto before we start I want to say we're all sorry about what we did to you before you were banished. Can you please forgive us for our foolishness? 
Her response was for Naruto to close his eyes and sigh. To be honest he didn't want to bring this up until after the fights so he decided it was best to answer the girl with something along those lines. Yamanaka-san this is not the time, nor the place to be discussing this kind of sensitive topic I will speak to you and the others when the fights are over, he replied as he got into his fighting. Withdrawing the stun knife that was sheathed horizontally on his lower back he proceeded to stand with his right leg in front of his left, held the knife in the reversed grip in front of him along with an open left hand and crouched slightly. Ino nodded and got into her family's stance as Anko came up to begin the battle. Second match, Naruto Uzumaki vs. Ino Yamanaka. Begin. Ino threw several shuriken at the blonde before blurring through hand seals as she performed her clan's most famous jutsu. Shintenshin no jutsu, Ino shouted her hands in a triangle-like shape and aiming at her fellow blonde opposite her. Up in the competitor's box. Damn it Ino that jutsu won't work, Shikamaru cursed as he facepalmed at her carelessness. What do you mean, Choji questioned, who was munching on some crisps that he had brought with him. Choji that jutsu requires the target to be immobilized because of the backlashes it demands. In the beginning her mind moves slowly and in a straight line, so all Naruto has to do is dodge to avoid being affected. Then as it takes time for her mind to return to her body Naruto can walk right up to her prone form and it's game over for Ino. It's the reason why we have the Ino Shika Cho trio because it's our jobs to keep our targets from moving so she can get a clear shot, Shikamaru groaned as he took out a cigarette and lit it before taking a puff. Back in the arena. True enough that is what exactly was happening for as soon as Ino finished her jutsu Naruto dive rolled to the right and ran straight to Ino's prone form. He then placed his stun knife at her neck and Anko decided to call the match. Winner, Naruto Uzumaki, Anko shouted as many of the ninja from the other villages cheered for the good fight, whilst everyone from Konoha were still stunned as they couldn't realize that the man down there was the same teenager they mistreated 10 years ago. As Ino came to it took her a moment to realize that she had lost. Getting up she walked over to the exit. Just before exiting she looked over her shoulder towards Naruto. Naruto promise you will speak with the Konoha 11 after this we really want to apologize for what we did. And I said yes now go we have another match to do, Naruto replied as Ino nodded and finally was out of his view only to be replaced by a blushing Hinata. Once everyone was ready Anko began the next fight. Third match, Naruto Uzumaki vs Hinata Hayuga. Begin. For a moment neither of them moved, until Naruto moved his hands to his shirt and started to remove it. Phew, it's hot. In fact it's so hot I need some more air, he said as his shirt was halfway off, causing a lot of females to blush at his toned abs and chiseled chest and many males to glare in jealously. And Naruto-kun, H hot, Hanada muttered as she pressed her index fingers and tried to get rid of the blush on her face. Soon it was too much for shy and timid Hanada, and it was much worse as she started having perverted thoughts. The result was her blasting off from a geyser of a nosebleed and pass out from both blood loss and the impact from falling. Naruto smirked as he put his shirt back on as everyone else sweet dropped at the victory. At seeing everyone's faces he scowled. Hey not my fault she's weak against my physique, Naruto said as everyone was snapped out of their dazes. Uh, winner, Naruto Uzumaki, Anko asked uncertainly as she was also in a daze but not from Hinata's loss. The stadium stayed quiet as Hinata was carried out of the arena as Tenten took her place. They may have been beaten easily but I can assure you that you'll break a sweat facing me, she stated boldly as she got into a fighting stance. Good, was all Naruto said as he too got into a fighting stance. Fourth match, Naruto Uzumaki vs Tenten. Begin, Anko shouted, this time jumping away as she knew Tenten's jutsu were of the widespread kind. Indeed she was right almost as soon as she had began the fight, Tenten had already brought out her sealing scrolls and proceeded to unseal her weapons from them as they sailed at the ex Konoha Shinobi. Unlike the others Naruto was forced to dodge or deflect her weapons as they came flying at him from almost all directions, though it was easy for him to do so judging from the smirk on his face. Good get annoyed so that she uses that big scroll on her back. Then I can go on the offensive, he thought as he dodged a kanai that missed him by a centimeter. Tenten though was getting frustrated. She had thrown all kinds of weapons at him only for him to either dodge or deflect him with that strange knife of his. Upon looking at it she knew it was a high quality weapon and would have had stars in her eyes if she wasn't in the middle of fight right now. Looks like I'm going to have to use that, she growled as she jumped on top of the farthest wall and took off the large scroll on her back. Good she's doing it, Naruto thought as he pulled out an M67 frag grenade and took off the safety pin but kept the safety lever on. Tenten threw the scroll overhead shouted out one of her most powerful attack. Sogu Tensasi. 
the sky literally became black from all the tools raining down on Naruto, who finally let go of the safety lever and tossed it at where Tenten was following the barrage. Boom. The resounding explosion caused many to gawk at the power behind it. It was twice as powerful as an explosive tag. How on earth did Naruto design that, was the general thought going through the cages and ninja. Though there were plots of stealing the technology from a certain raven, Pinkett and Council. But that wasn't the end of it, no, in fact the shock wave caused by the explosion caused the weapons to go flying off course leaving Naruto fine in the middle of a circle, surrounded by Tenten's weapons. Speaking of Konoha's weapon mistress, Tenten lay unconscious on the floor with multiple burn and stab wounds caused from the heat and shrapnel from the grenade. As she was carried away Anko let out a whoop of joy. Finally, some actual fighting is happening, I was afraid Naruto-kun would be able to win this without even trying. Winner, Naruto Uzumaki, Anko shouted in joy as said blonde chuckled at her antics. Cage box. It looks like Uzukage Dono's military are competent. Wouldn't you agree Suchikage Dono, may specifically ask Donaki, who, humped, and looked in another direction, though on the inside he was regretting his decision with every victory. Naruto's captains and wives were smirking at the complete awe shown to something they considered a minor tool. Imagine their surprise if they saw a nuke, was their general thought as each one laughed inwardly. Arena floor. Damn, you're cutting through them like butter. Are you sure you're not cheating? Anko mocked as Naruto laughed heartily at her. No Anko-chan I can assure you that I am not cheating. The reason why I am winning is because I am mainly using tactics. Whereas most of the ninja today use flashy jutsu and have honor, I do not. To me it's about doing the job right and the only time this won't happen is if civilians or hostages are involved as I would focus on their safety and unlike the hidden villages here, who make the shinobi look like heroes, all of my soldiers are taught both the good and bad about the military. They know that heroes are only made by the leaders when in fact all it was, was them defying the odds. Take the Yandaimi Hokage for example, the possibility of winning against an army is small with one man but with the Horaishin he won against the odds and so he was named a hero. What they fail to realize though that one man's hero is another man's villain. Whilst in Konoha he is seen as a hero because he saved a lot of Konoha ninja in IWA he is seen as a villain because of the IWA ninja he slaughtered, causing pain for any loved ones or relatives back home, Naruto informed Anko as the next opponent, Shikamaru, turned up. Troublesome, let's get this over with, he drawled out as both took fighting stances. Fifth match, Naruto Uzumaki vs Shikamaru Nara. Begin. For a minute or two neither combatant did anything thing until Naruto spoke up. Hey Nara-san, you don't look like you want to be here so why don't you just drop out? After all you won't gain anything you could use, Naruto asked in rhetorical tone as he rolled his neck in preparation. Fine, I forfeit. As soon as the words processed through everyone's heads they all face vaulted and started shouting obscenities at the lazy genius. Naruto and Anko were standing there with wide eyes and mouths open as they couldn't believe that that actually worked. Oh okay. Winner, Naruto Uzumaki, Anko stammered out as everyone continued to insult the Nara as he walked back to the Konoha 11. I can't believe that actually worked I was only joking, I didn't think he would actually do it, Naruto quietly said both Proctor and Combatant shook their heads to keep their focus on the topic at hand. Competitors box. Shikamaru, you lazy ass, you didn't even try anything, Ino scolded Shikamaru as he gave her a blank look. If you had been looking more carefully you would have seen that I had him trapped in my kitchen no jutsu, however when he rolled his neck without me doing it first I know my jutsu wouldn't even phase him, ergo no need to fight a match that would be too troublesome, Shikamaru intelligently spoke as he took another cigarette and lit as he gazed down to continue watching the fights, ignoring the looks being sent at him from the others. Down in the arena. You know at the rate you're going at we could schedule our date for as soon as this test finishes, Anko said as Naruto shrugged his shoulders in response. It was then that they spotted Shino coming down to begin his match. It's good to see you Naruto-sama after such a long time, Shino said monotonously whilst giving a small bow in respect. You too Abarame-san, Naruto replied mirroring Shino's bow as both took up their positions. Sixth match, Naruto Uzumaki vs Shino Abarame. Begin. As soon as Anko had finished her announcement insects started to fly towards Naruto, who remained still again as before. Up in the cage box. What is Uzukage Dono doing? Surely he knows that what he is doing is a great risk, may questioned as the other cages apart from the Tsunade nodded in agreement. Just because it is a large risk doesn't mean that it will fail, it means that the likelihood of success is small. Naruto however has proven that every single time this has happened to him, he pulled it off, Tsunade said as the others thought back on what they know of him. We said the same thing when we first saw him, but now look at him. 
He united all of our nations and peace has been achieved there. Unlike this place, Akio added, muttering at the end to only allow her companions to hear it, causing them to snicker slightly. With Naruto and Shino, Naruto waited until all of the insects covered him entirely. He then discreetly pushed the button on the stun knife to activate electrical shock to be initiated. On cue all of the insects let out a loud screech as they burned and Shino was too shocked to do anything against it as the surge traveled across them and back to him, shocking him as well. Soon it became too much and he collapsed from the pain, both physical from the electricity and the fact that his insect colony was almost destroyed. The crowds were once again stunned by the fight. They thought he couldn't use Jutsu, but he hadn't used any chakra. Therefore somewhere along the line he had found a way to use lightning without the need of chakra, it was, shocking to say the least. The cages themselves were in the same state of mind, many of them were just blank on the inside as they were still staring in awe at what had transpired. Naruto's group though were laughing internally at the looks everyone had. It seemed that they believed everything relied on chakra. Dot boy were they in for a wake-up call. Winner, Naruto Uzumaki. Damn I'm bored having to repeat that, Anko ended complainingly. Don't worry there's only 5 matches after that I would like to treat you to a homemade dinner, Naruto said as Anko licked her lips in anticipation. Can I join, a voice questioned as the pair looked to see Choji appear in his samurai armor. Sorry Akamichi-san that's for a date, now let's begin, Naruto stated as he stood in his combat stance again. Choji nodded and did the same. 7th match, Naruto Uzumaki vs Choji Akamichi. Begin. Choji was about to start doing hand seals until he saw Naruto take out a ration bar and start eating. What are those? Choji asked in curiosity. Oh just a protein bar, helps with conserving energy. Want one? Naruto finished, handing out one of the bars towards the unsuspecting Choji. Sure, Choji replied as he took one and ate it. As soon as the food touched his tongue his eyes narrowed and his face turned a shade of green as he threw it away and started throwing up. He was too preoccupied with trying to keep his lunch that he didn't notice Naruto walk up to him and knock him out with a simple chop to the neck. Winner, Naruto Uzumaki. What was that you used against him? Poison, Anko added as she finished announcing the winner. Grinning Naruto brought up the ration bar that he had given Choji. Nope. The food was just horrible. You see those were emergency food rations. They're kind of like the soldier pills except it replenishes the body's energy instead of chakra. The problem with them though is that they taste terrible or tasteless, but hey my men are trained to eat stuff like this until they can eat with a straight face like I did then, Naruto said as Anko took a bite from the one he had eaten. Almost immediately she spat it out again making retching sounds, but not actually throwing up. Fuck that's crap. This should be used for torturing people not as an emergency food supply, she choked throwing the pathetic excuse for food back to Naruto, who shrugged and finished it. This prompted Anko to make gagging noises to mock him, to which he returned with shaking his head with closed eyes and a small smile. Cage box. You know if that kind of food can even make an Akamichi vomit then I really don't want to try it, Gara said in his usual monotone voice. The other cages agreed quickly, deducing the same as the case cage. You're not the only ones, was the thought process of Naruto's group. Despite their experience and tolerability with the stuff, it still tasted horrible. Irina. Hey Naruto, good to see you again buddy. Arf, Kiba and Akamaru said simultaneously as they both stood opposite Anko and Naruto, who were discussing some everyday things about their lives. Naruto though looked blankly at the pair before he spoke in a rather cold tone. Inazuka-san do not speak to me in a friendly tone. After what you and some others did you have no right to address me in such a familiarity voice. If you must address me it will be either Uzumaki-sama or Uzukage-sama. Now let's begin the match. Both of his opponents flinched at his statement, but got into fighting stances nonetheless, indicating that they were ready. Eighth match, Naruto Uzumaki vs Kiba in Izuka. Begin. Kiba took out a soldier pill and tossed it to Akamaru, who swallowed it and his fur started turning red. Giju Ninpo, Shikyaku no Jutsu, Kiba yelled as he started to gain more canine attributes which were essential for using his clan's taijutsu. Flashing through hand seals he got down on all fours as a chakra aura started to show. When he finished them he was now surrounded by chakra-like flames as he called out his next jutsu. Akamaru then disappeared in a puff of smoke only to be replaced with an exact twin of Kiba, he was also in the same all fours position as the original. This trick again. Come on this is going to be boring. Dot dot. Although I don't want to push my luck since I am only wearing standard gear here and not my customized gear. Hem, that does remind me, I need to check in with gunsmith and see if my order is completed. I don't like that 5-7 I carried when I first arrived. 
Though I admit it is a good gun it just doesn't suit my style and this Beretta M9 doesn't even compare to what I ordered, Naruto thought as he stared off into the distance with a bored look on him. Upon see how bored Naruto was Kiba exploded. Fuck what's up with you. Don't ignore me, he shouted as he snapped Naruto out of his daze. Uh, oh it's just you and Izuka-san, could you please not yell I'm trying to think here, Naruto dismissed as he was intentionally doing it in order to enrage Kiba. It appeared to be working as both Kibis frowned deeply at the dismissal Naruto gave them. We'll show you not to underestimate us. Jujintai Jutsu Oji, Gatsuga, the original Kiba yelled as both lunged at Naruto whilst transforming into miniature tornadoes that would rip anything that touched them to shreds. Naruto smirked as he took out the pin to the smoke grenade and dropped it on the floor causing a gray cloud of smoke to fill the arena, blocking everyone's view in the process. Cage box. Why would Naruto do that? I read the reports of his Chunin exam preliminary match and it said Kiba did the same thing and almost won because of it. What does he gain from giving Kiba the advantage, Tsunade said as the other cages looked to her in confusion before looking back to fight in the arena. Arena. Ha. This what you come up with. Man you must still be the dead last if you think this will work. I mean how can you forget what happened at the Chunin exams, I'll still find you, Kiba said as he was his enhanced senses to locate Naruto from within the smoke. With the Konoha 11. Why is Naruto making a rookie mistake of allowing Kiba to easily find him when he is relying on sight mostly, Ino asked as the rest of the Konoha 11, minus Shikamaru, nodded in agreement. Sighing Shikamaru decided to re-enlighten them on how Naruto has been fighting so far. This is too troublesome to say, but look back on how Naruto's been fighting his matches presently, he said as the others thought about what he meant. It was Neji who answered him. He has been using deception, Neji said. Nodding towards the Hayuga Shikamaru continued. Right, so don't assume he is being stupid because whatever he did, he did it for a purpose, he stated as the others looked back towards the fighting. Arena. The smoke was clearing and Kiba could clearly see Naruto, but now he was wearing a gas mask and his thermal goggles, not that he knew that. What the fuck's that, Kiba demanded as he heard a muffled chuckle come from Naruto. Well Kiba this is known as a gas mask and what it does is allow me to breathe in a cloud of poison gas, which just so happens to have been the cloud we were in just a moment ago, Naruto informed Kiba in a slightly cheerful voice. But neither Akamaru or I could smell anything in the smoke, Kiba protested getting a nod along with the transformed Akamaru. In response Naruto spread his arms out in a kind of, I don't give a crap, look. Doesn't matter to me. I'm safe with this mask on and you should be feeling the effects of the poison, right, about dot now, Naruto stated. As soon as the words passed his lips Kiba immediately felt his right arm fall limp and go numb. He couldn't move it no matter how much effort he put into moving the limb. Fuck he's right, Kiba whispered to his partner, who whined in worry. I can give you the antidote if you surrender and forfeit the match or you can continue to try and win and I will keep avoiding you until you drop dead and I win anyway. So which will it be, Naruto asked, trying to keep any humor out of his voice. To many who knew Naruto from Konoha this was surprising considering they believed that he would never try to kill a comrade. Though many who personally knew Naruto believed that even though it was unlikely it wouldn't be surprising, especially with what happened before he was thrown out of Konoha. Thinking over his options Kiba decided to not risk and raised his hand. I forfeit, he reluctantly said as Akamaru transformed back into his original form. Winner, Naruto Uzumaki, Anko announced, though nobody applauded because although the match was over the case of Kiba's poisoning was still their main concern. Well give me the antidote, quickly before the poison kills us, Kiba yelled as Akamaru barked in agreement. Naruto then gave a sheepish grin. There isn't any. What, Kiba shouted, angry that he was tricked and would die for it. Naruto seeing this decided to explain before there was a stadium-wide panic. There was no poison either. I used the first rule for ninja, deception. I convinced you that the smoke was poisonous and that I was safe because of the gas mask, when in reality all it was was a large smoke bomb. But what about his arm, Anko asked as she too was curious about how Naruto made Kiba's arm numb. Naruto then pulled out a small serret with the word, morphine, written on it. This is known as morphine. It is used for treating battle wounds that are gained in a fight. When someone is wounded the pain is numbed by injecting this into the opposite limb to where the wound is. It then nullifies the pain receptors around the wound so that the brain doesn't register the, the wound there. This way men don't shout out in pain and give away their location and don't die from shock but the downside is that the whole limb is numbed to the point of being useless. I injected it into you when you were in a rage in the smoke so that you didn't register it. I found you in the smoke by using my thermal goggles, points to the goggles on his head, to track your heat signature, Naruto finished explaining.
Many of the medic nin and doctors were looking on in awe at the medical tool. They could really use that to allow patients relief from the pain they endure when out on missions. Tsunade herself wondered if it would be possible to arrange a trade for them. The other cages were along similar lines though more for what Naruto used it for in combat, after all being able to make an enemy collapse from numbness would help them a great amount. With the Konoha 11, see, told ya he had something cooked up. This whole thing has become too troublesome if you ask me, Shikamaru said as he finished he latest smoke. HN, the Dobie's been lucky, so what? He won't beat me in Uchiha Elite, was the arrogant Uchiha's statement, which caused all the other occupants Shikamaru, Lee and Neji to glare at him. Knowing he was outnumbered Sasuke scoffed and went back to scowling at the blonde Uzukage as Lee made his way down to the arena. Arena. What is it you plan on cooking for me Naruto-kun? Anko Kudas gave Naruto an innocent look that most men were unable to resist. Keyword being most. Anko-chan I'll tell you later, but I think Lee-san would like for the match to start, Naruto said as Lee gave him his signature, good guy pose. Yes I do believe we should begin this youthful match between two youthful fighters. If I can't win then I will do 200 laps of Konoha. If I can't do that I will do 400 push-ups and if I can't do. Shut up. We know already, everybody shouted towards Lee as everyone knew to cut him off before he and Guy did their most dangerous genjutsu. Hugging each other on the beach during a sunset. Lee blushed from embarrassment before he stood in his ideal fighting stance, the Goken. Naruto withdrew his stun knife and once again took up his combat stance. Anko, seeing that both of them were ready, raised her hand. Ninth match, Naruto Uzumaki vs Rock Lee. Begin. Lee leapt at Naruto with med Jonin speed and threw a fast right jab that Naruto ducked under. Lee was about to aim a kick but was surprised when he felt Naruto stab his knife into his right calf. He vaguely saw Naruto press a button on the knife until his whole world suffered from pain and from the same electric shock that Shino had received but got the full power of it rather than a diluted version that Shino got due to him being in direct contact with the knife. Soon the pain was too much and he passed out. Winner, Naruto Uzumaki, Anko said as cheers came from many of the foreign shinobi present and boos from the Konoha residents. And, I know the fight with Lee was disappointing but I couldn't find any names for the techniques he used so I wanted to wrap his match up quickly. Both Anko and Naruto rolled their eyes at the Konoha residents and wondered how the negotiations were going to go if Konoha had a mindset like this as a whole. As Lee was carried off and out of the clearing Neji took his place and got into his Juken without even speaking a word and activated his Byakugan. He knew that Naruto was not in a speaking mood for the Konoha 11, especially those who abused him before he was thrown out of Konoha. His aim so far was to beat Naruto in this fight. Once Naruto was ready as well Anko decided to start the second to last match. Tenth match, Naruto Uzumaki vs Neji Hayuga. Begin. Almost immediately Neji lunged with a Juken strike to Naruto's right shoulder, to which Naruto sidestepped and both began a series of taijutsu blows, blocks, dodges, counter blocks and counter attacks. To the audience it was astounding that Naruto was facing down one of the most effective taijutsu with little to no effort being needed. Neji was getting annoyed as his prized Juken was completely obsolete against the blonde who dodged or deflected all of his attempts to shut down his chakra network. How is he doing this? The Juken is supposed to be one the most prized taijutsu style and this man is easily avoiding it and he isn't even using any jutsu, just that knife and taijutsu, Neji thought as he made one last effort to Juken strike his stomach only for Naruto curve around his outstretched palm and landed a punch to his head, causing him to stagger slightly. That's another thing his punches are even more powerful than Lee's. If it wasn't for the fact that Naruto was banished I would have thought Tsunade taught him her super strength, he mentally added. Naruto meanwhile was waiting for Neji to pull a certain stance that would give him the opportunity to counter and end the match. During all of this he kept one of his hands close to the assortment grenades he had as the fight dragged out. A couple of minutes later Neji was getting agitated decided to use something from the Chunin exams as he jumped a few yards away before he got into a different stance that all the Hyuga recognized right away. Naruto though mentally grinned as he saw the stance. Now to put my plan into action, he thought as he reached to back of his belt and grabbed something that went unnoticed by everyone else. You are within my range of divination. Hak Hyaku Nijuhichi show, Neji called out as he charged at the blonde Uzukage. Only to see a small device being thrown right into his view. He quickly glanced at Naruto, to see him closing his eyes and covering his ears. Instinctively he did the same but two things prevented this. Firstly he forgot to deactivate his Byakugan and secondly he didn't cover his ears in time. The result was for him to be blinded by a large flash and to go deaf from a loud bang that ringed through his ears. 
It didn't help that the Byakugan enhanced his vision quality so he felt the effects more than a normal person would. Falling back from seeing white and being slightly deaf he wasn't aware of Naruto's fist smashing into his face, sending him skidding a few feet away before he was unconscious. Naruto grinned as he pulled his fist back to his side. What happened there Naruto-kun? I saw a flash and heard a loud bang, then I see Neji knocked out, Anko asked cradling her head slightly to steady herself. Well you see, when Neji charged at me I threw what is called a flashbang. It temporarily blinds and deafens the enemy to disorientate them. Thanks to this I got an opening and all it took was a hard punch to put him out, Naruto explained as Anko laughed at the grin he was showing. Fuck you're good at this shit. Anyway one more and then we go on our date, Anko said as they saw the last of the Konoha 11 come down. When Sasuke came out onto the field he had that he still had that cocky smirk of his he always wore when he was convinced that he would win. He had his arms folded over his chest as he casually walked into the arena with an air arrogance surrounding him. Naruto's eyes narrowed at the sight of the man that had caused him to be thrown out of Konoha. Though I think I should thank him for that as I did find a better place to go to and marry my two wives, Naruto thought as he went to stand next to Anko. In his mind he heard Kurama growl at the Uchiha. That waste of space. Kid do me a favor and humiliate that bastard I still have a bone to pick with that damn clan, especially after what Madara did to me both when he was facing that Senju and Namikaze, Kurama angrily said as he saw through Naruto's eyes the Uchiha flare his Sharingan. When the Konoha villagers and ninja saw the legendary Sharingan they all cheered and praised him. On the outside Sasuke looked like he wasn't paying attention, but Naruto knew that all of the time he had known the raven head he always wanted attention and that right now he was mentally grinning. So Dobi, ready to lose to me again as like all the other times, he mocked as many others laughed at Naruto thinking that it would make him do something rash and be disqualified. Yet I was the one to bring you back to Konoha Uchiha-san. Please spare me any unsavory comments and let's begin, Naruto said as he moved his hand towards his stun knife again and he was about to grab it when Sasuke decided otherwise. Don't you dare insult me, an Uchiha elite. I bet the Yandaimi and his wife didn't even want you considering they died just to get away from you. They didn't want to live with a demon so they killed themselves, ha, ha, Sasuke laughed as many of the Konoha residents laughed as well, whilst the foreigners believed that that was uncalled for but didn't say anything. Naruto bowed his head slightly so that his hair obscured his eyes from view and his right hand that was reaching for his stun knife redirected itself to take out the Beretta M9 and held it in front of him. He then used his left hand to pull the slide back to see that a round was chambered. Releasing the slide he took the safety off and stood in position. This time though it was different, it was more casual with his legs being slightly apart and his hands by his sides. Cage box. Uchiha-san should not have done that, Yugito stated as the other cages turned towards her. What do you mean, Tsunade asked as even though she disliked the Uchiha it was still her duty to look after him as well as all her other ninja, both as the Hokage and a medic nin. It's because of the weapon Naruto has now drew, Fu added as the cages looked to her now, looking for more information. Seeing that she now had their attention Fu decided to continue. You see when he was tortured by people who he trusted a lot and prayed would stand by him in his moment of need. Tsunade winced at that, something in him broke, Fu drew out at the end. And because of that Naruto developed a mental mode called killer mode. What it means is that he loses all other thoughts and goes into a kind of trance. No love, happiness or kindness. In fact there isn't even any negative emotions like anger or rage. All there is, is one thing, kill. At one point Naruto was outnumbered by enemies and to combat them he entered this mode and let's just say it made the Uchiha massacre look tame, Yugito finished for Fu as the cages turned back to look at Naruto more closely. Arena. When Yugito and Fu finished their explanation Naruto lifted his head to stare right into Sasuke's Sharingan eyes. Sasuke himself was starting to doubt himself when he looked into Naruto's eyes. His half-lidded eyes were dead looking as if there was no life left in them. His face didn't show any expression, just as blank as a fresh canvas. His hair caused shadows to appear over his eyes, making his posture even more deathly. Inwardly shivering Sasuke drew his tanto in his right hand and stood in his kenjutsu stance. The two stared at each other one with a deathly gaze and one with a slightly nervous but arrogant gaze. Seeing that the two ready Enko started the match. 11th match, Naruto Uzumaki vs Sasuke Uchiha. Begin. As if one Q Sasuke weaved through numerous hand seals, whilst Naruto just stood there, not reacting at all to the danger being presented. After Sasuke had finished making hand seals he brought his left hand to his mouth and took a deep breath. Kaden, Gokaku no Jutsu, he called out as he released a large fireball, twice his height, at the rooted Uzukage. When the fireball connected it exploded and scorched the earth around it. 
Many people started to cheer thinking that Naruto had been caught in the flames, to which Sasuke forgot about his initial fear, smirked smugly and turned off his Sharingan. After a few seconds he didn't hear Anko call him the winner and the cheers from before had dies down. Upon closer inspection he saw that they were ones of shock and they were intentionally looking behind him. What are they so shocked about, he thought as he rose an eyebrow in confusion and turned around to see what they staring at. Dot dot dot. Only to find himself looking down the barrel of Naruto's M9. Dot dot dot. Bang. Ah, Sasuke shouted as he dropped his tanto so that he could cover his left eye, which now had a hole in it and was bleeding profusely. In reality that would have blown a hole through his skull, but because of his instinct Sasuke was able to make the bullet go diagonally through his eye and out the side of his head before it hit anything else important. As soon as he fell to the ground Naruto pressed the M9 against his forehead with that same dead look about him as if it didn't matter to him that he had just blew a person's eye out. Naruto pulled the hammer back ready to fire another round directly into his brain and was in the process of squeezing the trigger but paused when he heard Anko shout out to him. Naruto-kun stop. You won all right. No need to go any further, Anko yelled as Naruto registered what she said and stopped within seconds of killing the Uchiha. Sasuke opened his only working eye to see Naruto's expression come back to reality, though he still had a cold expression on. Naruto relaxed his grip from pulling the trigger and pulled the hammer back into place, before putting it back into its holster and walking off towards the changing rooms. Asshole, he muttered as he passed the Uchiha without even looking at him as the medic Nin came and tried to heal his eye. He then looked at Anko and gave her a small smile to reassure her that he was fine. I'll pick you up after the negotiations for our date Anko-chan, he said cheerfully as Anko nodded back with a grin as she decided to finish the tournament. Winner of the tournament, Naruto Uzumaki. Many of the foreigners cheered loudly, including the captains and privates, whilst the Konoha residents kept quiet as they were inwardly fuming that the demon won. The cages themselves were shocked, though Anaki was more like sweating as he knew what that meant. Uzushiogakur was now under the UWN's control and not theirs, all because of his stubbornness. As Naruto walked into the changing rooms he absently thought of what the negotiations would be like. Most likely a pain in the ass, he thought as took off his helmet and started changing. Dot dot dot. If only he knew how right he was. Meanwhile. So the Kayubi's Jinchuriki won the bet and is now the owner of Uzushiogakur. This does throw a dent into our plans, Madara said as he stood in front of the ghetto mazo that contained all of the biju that they had accumulated so far. Why is that Madara-sama, Sasori said from within his puppet. It is because judging from how big that ship of theirs is, they would need a coastline that allowed deep sea ships to dock and Uzushio just happens to be the only place with such a coastline. This will mean that the time it takes for the UWN to send troops across will be shortened, Madara replied. What do you propose we do then? Ku, 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 Orochimaru hissed as Madara turned towards him. We shall try a preemptive strike. Have the White Zetsu army stage an attack during the negotiations between the UWN and the Shinobi Alliance. Hopefully they will be able to capture the Jinchuriki as well, Madara ordered as Zetsu nodded and sunk into the earth until he was gone. Madara then addressed Idara. I want you to sink their ship that is near Naha port in Karigakur. Your ability to use clay birds should prove useful against their defenses. On it, Un, Didera responded as he made a large bird of clay, big enough for him to ride on and flew out towards baseplate. Sasori, I want you to try and copy those devices the Kayubi Jinchuriki used in the tournament. They could be very useful for the future. Orochimaru organize our troops to be ready for when the reinforcements from the United Whirlpool Army arrive. We must be prepared for anything, Madara finished as he used Jiku Kanido to teleport himself to another location. As the others went away to do what they had been ordered to do Orochimaru continued to scheme again at the prospect of getting the Sharingan. Soon I will have Sasuke-kun and my ticket to immortality.